Hello and welcome to another video hosted by the Synapse. With us today we have Professor Joseph Cacciattolo who will be speaking to us about asthma, COPD and current as well as new medications in this field. Welcome Professor Cacciattolo. Uh, my first question to you today, what can you comment about the impact in terms of morbidity as well as mortality of asthma and COPD on the adult population? Well, thank you very much, Gabriel, for hosting me on this program. It's a pleasure yeah. to be here. Um, well, asthma and COPD are two very, very common conditions in this country and in most European countries. And probably um, they are um, very common reasons why, why uh, patients consult their family doctors. Um, they, they, do pose, they, do, they do pose a very common primary health care problem. Uh, at all stages. Um, asthma is probably getting more common in, in this country and in many, many other countries. And COPD, um, although it's probably getting commoner, uh, I think there's a gender element here. It's getting probably commoner amongst women. I think, I think it's, it's becoming quite stable amongst men, but because of their smoking history, they, that relatively, they started smoking relatively later um, women, um, they're catching up with, 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 with males. Um, there's a lot of undiagnosed COPD. Um, asthma, uh, probably we don't, there is not much undiagnosed asthma because of the, sim the symptoms of asthma declare themselves unless it's some occult problem like cough variant asthma. But um, when it's COPD, um, patients often delay discussing things with their family doctor because they, they, the coughing that they have, they ascribe this to a um, smoker's early morning cough. Um, but in reality, it is, it is COPD. Um, what are we heading in terms of mortality and mor morbidity? Certainly, the mor we're lucky that the mortality from asthma in, in, in Malta is very, very low. And for this, for a variety of factors. I think the most important factor here is that there is, there is much awareness among the medical community among, 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 about the correct treatment of asthma. As regards COPD, there is a mortality related to this because COPD is a disorder that, that affects the older age group. And also, um, it's also, also associated with with other conditions like heart disease, like like kidney disease, and, and of course the aging the aging process. In terms of um, morbidity from COPD, it's been it's been um, established by WHO that that COPD will be the third the third in line really uh, of all diseases for for COPD morbidity. The first one, of course, is cardiovascular disorders. Um, in terms of in terms of impact on the community, um, the, the impact is great, mainly COPD because it it does affect it does affect people's lifestyles and, and it does affect um, not only not only in terms of lifestyle itself but also in terms of exacerbation and the, the need for for secondary health care. Earlier on, you've mentioned uh, symptomatology that some people present with um, possibly chest pain or sputum or dyspnea and they do not present specifically as in pure asthma or pure COPD. What advice can you give to those medical professionals, healthcare professionals out there who are watching this video? How can they actually diagnose a patient with very non-specific symptomatology? Well, I think this is an excellent question because this is, has been a concern. There has been a concern of many, many doctors, both at primary health care level and secondary health care levels. The symptoms of asthma and COPD are often very, very similar. In fact, in fact, most medical students remember that famous Venn diagram, you know, with three circles. One circle says emphysema, one circle says, says chronic bronchitis, which is, of course, COPD, and another circle says asthma. And then in the, where these circles, the three circles intersect, is probably what's the overlap. And over the last six years, perhaps, I mean, it's been, it's been noted, it's been mooted, rather, that there is a COPD asthma syndrome. It usually affects uh, at, at a younger age, and, but it's much more aggressive. It's more, much more aggressive, and the, and the, and the exacerbations are, are, also, are also more pr pr problematic because you're dealing with two, two conditions. Uh, often it's very difficult to dissect one from the other. 
because the symptoms are, are, are common, but also because there's the smoking element into this. And, and the inflammatory element is, is common to both. It used to be thought that, that there were set two separate inflammatory processes, once with an eosinic component in, in ASPA and one in a, tu- a neutrophilic component in COPD. But it's now been, been, been shown that it's, the, the, two, the two inflammatory processes are quite similar. What fact. age groups are we speaking of here? With, in terms of asthma, we're talking about all sorts of age groups. I mean, asthma can affect, can affect infants and it can affect people um, eight years and over. Um, the, it can start at, that, at those ages. But whereas COPD is usually a disorder that affects people uh, 40 and, and over, and that's related either to, to, to long-term smoking or short-term smoking. It all depends how you react to smoking. There are people who smoke 10 cigarettes a day, and and develop COPD and there are people who smoke 60 cigarettes a day and don't develop COPD it's part of 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 our genetic makeup um, how we react to it so really what we're talking about is 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 people who are between 50 and 60 years of age when when they start when they start presenting with this asthma COPD overlap syndrome on to treatment now Um, uh, interestingly enough uh, in the past decade or so, we've seen the advent of uh, quite a number of new medications, including fast, potent and long-acting bronchodilators, as well as mixtures, uh, which are given in a single inhaler. What can you comment about these uh, new developments? Um, there have been very exciting developments, but, but there's nothing novel. The no- there's nothing novel about them. Um, the novelty, for example, salbutamol, which is the short-acting um, beta-2 agonist, has been with us since 1972. And now we're using long-term beta-2 agonists. Um, the, um, the anti-muscarinic agents like ipratrobium bromide has been with us for over 30 years, but now we're using um, anti-muscarinic agents that are long-acting. So really, so really, there is nothing novel about it what's in, in per se, but it's the duration of action. And of course, that has made an impact on, on the lifestyle and on the compliance of, of patients. Also, there has been um, new developments in terms of, of combining medications. You have long-term inhaled steroids and long-term beta-2 agonists, uh, long-term anti-muscarinic agents combined with long-term beta-2 agonists. So really, it's quite exciting. Um, you know, the armamentarium that a physician has nowadays to treat asthma and COPD is very, very exciting. As exciting as it may be, though, some patients will have to buy these new medications from their own pockets. They're not given yeah. free. So what can you comment? As in, is newer better? Or because of this price difference, what would you consult the patient to do? I think that uh, a patient has to make... Uh, I find that patients have to make their own decisions. Um, some patients realize that although it is expensive, but in terms of lifestyle changes, the fact that they can take these these medications that are extremely effective uh, once a day and 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 have and forget all about treatment for the rest of the day, I think they find it very useful and worth going at work paying extra for that. Obviously, you can't you can't speak for everybody. There are people who genuinely can, cannot afford to buy the most basic medication, and then they have a, what they would have, would have to rely on what is what is what is given uh, free of charge. One final question, with regards to new developments, we've already discussed that developments weren't actually that new in terms of the ingredient, but in terms of their potency or their duration of action. What do you foresee in the coming future, and what advice can you give to the medical professionals who are watching this video? One would wish that there will be treatment in the pipeline that would actually cure asthma and would cure COPD or reverse COPD. But unfortunately, I don't can't see any, anything in the pipeline yet. Um, having said that, I mean there are medications in the in the pipeline which are more specific that can be targeted to specific patients and specific conditions. Um, it's one would have to do specific tests and one would have to do specific questionnaires, if it, if it were, to 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 tailor the right the right um, the right medication for the right person. Uh, but apart from that, I think we have to think in terms of of the combined medications and the convenience and the convenience of this medication to the patient, uh, to the patient in terms of compliance itself. 
That's all for today. Thank you, profs, for your time and patience. And uh, we hope that this topic has helped you shed more light on asthma and COPD. We will be with you with more videos in the coming weeks from the sign-ups, bringing you content that matters to the busy medical professional.